Okay, here we're going to solve a fluid mechanics problem involving uh, pump systems using Python and some widgets. So a pump is used to move a uh, fluid through a pipeline. So here we have a tank and then a length of pipe and then a pump. Uh, the flow rate is controlled by a valve into another tank. And the pump can supply pressure at various flow rates. And generally, the pressure is highest at a low flow rate. And then as the flow rate increases, the pressure uh, decreases. If we divide the fluid pressure by the density and the gravity, which are both constant, then we get units of length. And we call that a head. So we can plot head versus flow rate. And this plot here is an example of a uh, pump curve. So this is what the pump can supply for various flow rates. And we'll consider the top curve. These different curves here correspond to different pump sizes, or in this case, impeller sizes. So the flow through the system itself is related by a mechanical energy balance. So uh, this left-hand side is uh, the Bernoulli equation. If the right-hand side were 0, this would be the Bernoulli equation. and this is effectively, these terms are effectively energy, but they've been divided by rho g to show, um, well, the equation is a mechanical energy balance, and here each term has units of uh, length, which is head. So here we have um, basically a balance between uh, pressure, gravitation, or uh, kinetic energy, uh, potential energy, uh, the pump supplies energy, and then we have a loss due to friction in the pipe and a loss due to friction in the valve. So these things are all in balance. So if we take the uh, tanks as being open to the atmosphere with no velocity and at the same height, then we can effectively ignore delta P, delta V, and delta Z so that the pump is supplying the energy that is lost by friction and lost by, uh, sorry, the pump is supplying the energy that's lost by friction in the pipeline and loss by friction in the valve. And we're ignoring any other uh, uh, lo losses, head losses. So um, if, we, if we use these assumptions that delta P, delta V, and delta Z are all zero, and then solve for HP, we get this blue expression. And this is the operating curve. So as the velocity increases, the flow rate in the pipe will increase and that will increase HP. So that curve would start at 0 when V is 0, H is 0, and then increase quadratically uh, up to the right, assuming a constant F, which isn't true, but is well, an approximation we'll use here for illustration. So what we have then is that the system itself will operate where the operating curve of this equation uh, balances the H versus flow rate from the pump itself. <clears throat> that is, the system can operate anywhere on this blue operating curve, <coughs> but because the flow is driven by a pump, we're restricted to points that also lie on the pump curve. So if we have an operating curve, then the actual operation point will happen where it intersects the pump line. So that's our goal, is to find the uh, find the operating point where the operating curve and the pump curve intersect. And then normally what you do to change your operating point is to open or close the valve. And by opening and closing the valve, you change this, um, this term here. And the curve that we'll see will change shape. It'll go like up. It'll basically pivot around this zero point and kind of spread. And you can change where you operate by controlling that valve position. Okay, so for our problem, we'll take L is 35 meters. We'll take a friction factor to be constant at 0.015, and we'll let the pipe diameter be 0.1 meters. And we'll develop a widget that will let us visualize and change the operating point by changing the uh, valve, open and closing the valve, which amounts to changing the value of the uh, valve coefficient K. So we'll import some boilerplate here, NumPy, Matplotlib, We'll use an interpolation routine, F solve to solve the equation, and pint to deal with our units, and some widgets to deal with, um, to create a widget. So part A, we're going to use something like webplot digitizer to get the pump data. And this will give us the head versus flow rate. 
and then we'll use pint to convert the units to SI and then we'll store the arrays without units for later calculation. So let's first grab the grab a picture of this. If we uh, we'll just grab a we'll grab a screenshot <coughs> of this pump figure. <coughs> and then we'll go over here to this web plot digitizer in the link. And this is a cool tool that will allow us to pull points directly off the image. So we'll file load the image that we just made, choose file, desktop, this um, screen shot that we just made. And then there's some options here. We want a 2D XY plot, align the points. So we click on points one, two, three, and four. So points there are lower axes and you get a nice picture on the right and here at a thousand and then we can do the other point here for the y-axis and the little final point for the y-axis and you can be more careful about this than I'm being but this is going to be zero and a thousand and zero and 120 click OK and then we just click all the points we're interested in so we'll click a bunch of points here along the curve you can choose as many as you want and I won't click them all but then if you go over here to view data it shows you a list and then you can download the CSV file and it will uh, download the file and I've already got one of those so I'll quit out of that um, and we've called it in this case we've called it pump.csv and moved it into our main folder that we're working in and the first column are the flow rates in gallons per minute and the second column are the pump heads in feet. So we've got that data pump.csv. So let's go back in here and load it in. So we can go um, data equals np.loadtxt, the name of the file pump.csv and it's a comma delimited folder so we'll go delimiter equals a comma and then we'll let the um, <coughs> flow rate for the pump we'll use Q for flow rate is the first column of the data and the head is the second column of the data and we can plot it plt.plot just to see what we've got HP and QP and we get this curve here uh, oops flip that QP and HP and we get this pump curve that looks basically like this data. Okay, now it has those units, so let's put the units on it. Pint times u dot gallons per u dot minute and u dot feet. And then we can convert those units. Whoops. We can convert those units. QP dot ITO. We'll turn that into uh, u dot meters cubed per second. And for HP, we'll turn that into meters. And then we'll let QP equal QP dot magnitude to get rid of the units and HP likewise. And then when we plot these, we just get different scales. So that'll be just fine. Okay, great. So now part B, given the flow and head, data from part A, let's create a pump curve using interp1d. So this is easy, we just do um, call it pump curve equals interp1d and we give it the x data and the y data, qp and hp. And now this pump curve is a function that we can pass in any value that we want along this uh, axis. So if we put in like 0.05, we get the value out. So this is our function now, and we get it from interpolating. Now let's allow it to extrapolate just in case. Uh, fill value equals extrapolate. Okay, great. So part C, let's write a function for the operating curve. We now have the pump curve. Let's write a function for the operating curve. It takes two parameters the flow rate and the valve coefficient and returns the required pump head. Okay, so we do def operating curve 
takes two parameters, the flow rate and the valve coefficient. And now L was 35 and F was 0 0.015 and D was 0 0.1 and G is 9.81. Put units on these meters. Doesn't have units on F. D is meters and G is meters squared per second. And then we have um, <clears throat> our pump is F times L times V squared over 2 dG. I think that's the equation. FLV squared over 2 dG and then KV squared over 2G. Oops, plus K times V squared over 2 uh, G. Yep, great. Now this is in terms of velocity and we haven't written velocity yet. So Q is equal to uh, pi uh, fourths times uh, the, basically the area d squared times the velocity. So if we solve that for the velocity, we get v equals 4 times q over pi uh, <clears throat> over d squared, like that. So we'll calculate that. v is 4 times q divided by pi divided by d squared, like so. Okay, great. Then we have, um, <coughs> then we'll just return that, return hp. And now we can plot these things. So we can go um, plt.plot, and we'll just use the data qp and hp we'll do QP and the operating curve with QP and we'll let K be I don't know, like 25 and then we plot that and we can see we get an operating curve and a pump curve and where they intersect this is where the actual system will flow and if we change that 25 to be something bigger like 100 then <clears throat> we're effectively closing the pipe and it moves backwards and if we make it be all the way open zero then that orange line is traversed down so you can change where you where you uh, run how much flow rate you have by changing whether the valve is open or closed okay so that seems to be working <clears throat> so now let's write a function that will actually calculate our operating point we were able to see it as the intersection of those two curves but now we actually want to calculate that point. So we'll do that. We'll call it, uh, we need a function for that. So def, I don't know, get operating point. And it takes k as a parameter. And it will print out the operating point. So to do that, we need to equate the two equations. The pump curve is equated to the operating curve. And we solve for the corresponding flow rate. So for this, we'll make a function. We're going to use f solve for this. So we'll go def f of our unknown, which is q. And we return the pump curve, which takes in uh, q minus the operating curve, which takes in q and k. And then we'll go v equal or q equals f solve the function. We'll give it a guess. We know from our plot before, if we just look at the pump points, qp, they range from 0 to 0.05. So we'll just do something like 0.02 as a guess. <clears throat> so a guess of 0 0.02 for f solve. And then, um, then what? Oh, then we've got uh, um, this function q needs to also pass in k. There's different ways to do this, but because the operating curve wants q and k, we'll let f have q and k, but then f solve needs to know to call f with k also. So we'll go args equals k. There we go. And um, then we're going to print. Then once we have the solution k, and that's an array, so we'll just grab the first element of the array, which is q itself. Then we'll let q, once we have q, we can get h, which is simply um, 
either the pump curve or the operating curve with our new solution and the same K. And we can print these out. We'll go Q equals uh, Q, we'll go 0.3F, <clears throat> and that has units of meters cubed per second. And then we'll do um, H equals H, and that can be 0.1F, and that's uh, meters, like so. Okay, let's see if this thing works. So go get operating point, pass in a K of like 25, <clears throat> gives us a value. We'll double check that when we plot it in a second, but it seems to work and it outputs it in a way that looks kind of nice. So now let's also let this function um, plot. So PLT, <clears throat> let's make some data to plot. <coughs> we'll call it Q points np.win space will go from the lowest value np.min q pump to np.max q pump and I don't know uh, 100 points and then we can plot this plt.plot q points and we want the pump curve so that will be pump curve with those points and we'll also do the operating curve with those same points. And then we'll also plot the solution. Plot uh, Q and H. And maybe give it Y lim. We'll go from, I don't know, 0 to 30, I think is what it is. And we'll give it plt.x label. Uh, Q meters cubed per second and the Y label can be H meters okay great and yeah when we call this we need to give it K there we go we get this lovely plot very nice okay so that's about it now part E, let's go ahead and make this into an interactive plot, and we'll do that with the interactive widget. So wg.interact, and we give it our function, get operating point, and we'll let k go from 0 to 100, with steps of 5 maybe, push go on that, and we get... Uh, this interactive plot. So this interact function gives us a widget and we can change let's see, give us some space here. We can change um, that line location. So as we close the valve, as we make, sorry, as we open the valve making K smaller, the operating line moves to the right and we get higher flow rate. And when we close the valve, moving it to the, closing the valve gives us a lower flow rate as we'd expect. And that operating line moves to the right. So kind of fun. So this is an example of combining several different tools that we have in Python. So we're using WebProt Digitizer to grab the data. And we load it in with NumPy, change the units with Pint, uh, get a function out of it using Interp1D. You could also fit a curve fit to the data if you wanted to do that too then we could then we grab the operating curve a function for that and then we wrote into a function to actually solve the problem and here we have a function inside of a function and this prints the results and makes a plot and then we're able to interact with it by feeding that thing the parameter it wants k uh, with this interact function kind of a nice synthesis of ideas